Ladies and gentlemen, let's play Ren and Stimpy, Stimpy's Invention. This can only go up. It can't go anywhere else. Game start. That is quite the machine. A machine known as the Mutatomatic. That's a very good question, Ren. I'd actually like to know what it is, too. It's very intriguing. Why, it transforms ordinary household garbage into delicious food. That's why I like Stimpy. He's always thinking about the world and what's best for it. This could solve a lot of problems. And all you have to do is turn it all the way up to max? Okay, I'm thinking high would have been fine. <laughs> what kind of overload is that? What exactly are the ramifications of this overload? I like that Stimpy wrote the manual, but has to defer to it in order to, like, see what to do in this sort of situation. Very cool. So we need to collect all the pieces, reassemble it, and then turn the machine off. Because apparently it's stuck to on, and, uh, the game gives no indication as to what that means. What the consequences are, why we have to do it. All that matters is that we do it. So the first level is the neighborhood. This is Ren and Stimpy, collectively, together, for the first time. Well, not really. But that's not the point. The point is, just like in Toe Gem and Earl, this game is two-player. However, unlike in Toe Gem and Earl, you can control both characters by pressing start and switching to the other. Ah, yes. Both have their own attacks. Both useful or useless, depending on the situation. Ow. Let's get that vulture out of here by throwing Stimpy's nose at it. Dodge these flamingos. Your, uh, your partner is just like Tails in the Sonic the Hedgehog games. He's invincible. So you don't have to worry about him getting hit, or falling in pits, or uh, losing the game, as it were. That's fine. You just focus on your own hiney. In the least attractive ways possible. Hairball. Now, there are no power-ups in this game. However, collecting jars of powdered toast will refill your health a little bit. Do I like it? No, sir. I don't like it. But you might. The other items just give you points. They, uh, aren't really all that helpful. Unless you care about points. And if you do, you're probably used to playing games like this. So that's fine. Each character has his own list of attacks and locomotion style, um, abilities. All useful for something, although some are more useful than others. So, try to keep that in mind as you play, because they will all come in handy at one point or another. Except for slapping Stimpy, that's just for fun. And you know you all want to do it. So we've entered the freezer, and there is a world. Thank you, Powder Toast Man. There is a world in every freezer. Go in yours and take a look. Ha! <laughs> the eye screamed. Get it? Eye scream? Well, that's what it says right on the box, so I guess that's what you can expect. I don't know what the cocks are all about, but I'm sure it's some sort of joke involving the cold. Blue cocks. That explains why they're so small, right? <laughs> Alright, let's get this... Ah! Bastard eye! I just spit on a cock. That's, <laughs> that's what I just did. Spitting on eyes isn't quite as, um... I don't know, provocative? But that's fine. Hitting, and, hitting them with a fly swatter is just as well. Now you'll notice that we can't jump here, which is why you go up to your partner, real close, or your common law, whichever you want to call it, and you press up and C, and you will squeeze his body to make it to the next area. Always keep your abilities in mind, because they all come in handy, like I said. So, use your patented Stimpy Hammer and avoid these walruses. Or are they Walry? Is it Walry? I don't know. And we've already gotten our first piece, the beaver power. This isn't an ability that you use, it's just what powers the machine. That is the end of the neighborhood. And they all told me that that's where it would go. Take it on home! Oh! Yeah! Yo! Me! And that's the end of the first level. Next time on Let's Play Ren and Stimpy, Stimpy's Invention, we go to the zoo.